Did you know this video is brought to you by Squarespace? It's true! Make your very own website with Squarespace. 16 different colors, only 8 pencils. In today's video, we're going to be creating 8 illustrations, each using the color palette provided on each pencil. What can we create using these random color palettes? Let's find out! But obviously, we do have a little bit of swatching to do, and I really want to see what it looks like when you blend the two colors together. Some of them will probably look a little bit like dooky brown, red and green together, not the best combination to blend. I'll be honest, I think the thing I'm most excited for with these color pencils is just seeing how these random colors blend together. I can't imagine black to yellow is great, but here we are. Okay, so it's definitely, it's definitely a black faded to yellow. I'll be honest, not much to say about it. Next up, we have an orangey red to brown. Seems, seems pretty normal enough to fade together. Also just realized that these colored pencils do not have names. Maybe I should name the color combinations. That could be fun. Next up, unfortunately, we do have a red and dark green, a little bit Christmassy. Let's see how those blend together. Oh gosh, how do I make an illustration using these colors without going Christmassy? The green to red isn't as gross as I thought it would be. Huh, I, I kind of like it. Moving on to a bright purple and blue. Obviously purple and blue are gonna go well together because, I mean, come on, it's purple and blue. Moving on to a sort of poop green and brown color combination. We do love that. I've noticed there are a lot of greens in this pack. Very interesting. Not against it. I do love green. Another green combination. No way. Oh no, this is even more Christmassy than the previous color combination. Just a little bit more brighter. What's this? Another green. Actually, do I like it? <gasps> I kind of like it. And last but not least, we have a classic complementary color combination. We have blue to orange, which I love using in my illustrations. But how do they blend together is the question. Oh, that's quite a much lighter orange than I was expecting. Interesting. Okay, that one was a little rough, I'll be honest. But overall, looking at these color combinations, I'm pretty excited to take inspiration from these colors. Shall we name them? Night. Oh, you know, the dying color combination, because I think of fall when the tree leaves are dying. A vibe. Wet and wild nature. That holiday. That dinosaur. Yeah, this one's no good. Great, we've named our color combinations. Time to get creative. Before we get to creating, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Did you know I sell my very own original artwork on my website? My website built using Squarespace. Squarespace gives you every option you need to make a website. We're talking members areas, online stores, print on demand, portfolios, galleries, connect your social media accounts. The features go on. If you're an artist like me, you're an artist. You make art, not websites. So you need someone like Squarespace to help you out. And if you still can't figure it out, there is 24 seven email support so you can get help whenever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Casey Golden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for making this video possible. Let's get into creating our eight bicolor doodles. Goodbye other colors. We only need one. Now, obviously with a yellow and black pencil, I can't help but think of a bee. And I was thinking it might be kind of cute for these illustrations to create just like creatures, creatures that don't exist in our world. So that's right, I'm already thinking a bee and you might be thinking at this point, Casey, you're drawing a worm, not a bee. Yeah, you're right. But someone told me on one of my streams that I should turn my worm into a bee. So let's do a long bee. I guess. Where does the wings of a long bee even go? Should I just put two little wings over here? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I know bees only have, you know, so many legs, but a long bee, it's gotta have more, right? Okay, well, we have a long bee. I mean, that's kind of cute, right? I guess I'll start off with the yellow because I know if I put the black down first and then put yellow on top, I think, I say after I said I know that the yellow will smudge the black everywhere. So let's just do the yellow first. The longer the bee, the better, right? No such thing as a short bee. Okay, all of our yellow is colored in. Now we will move on to 
our black bits and I was actually thinking it might be cute to add texture as if the bee is very fluffy and I will also add little fuzzy textures to the yellow bits okay let's see let's make this bee as fuzzy as possible by adding some texture here between the colors I want to also make the black fuzzy looking but I don't know how well that's gonna work I think that that sort of looks fuzzy right I feel like we got really lucky starting off with two different colors that are very good for lining and coloring. Obviously black is going to be very good for lining. I'm not really sure what I want to do for some of these other colors that aren't quite as different in contrast. So we will see. Oh my gosh. I was told these were indestructible. Look, it's true. It even says break resistant. Break resistant. I was lied to. Faber Castell, how could you? Okay, we have to make his little booty super fluffy. And the spiky thing, <laughs> it's called a stinger, Casey. And no, I have not forgotten the wings. Let's add the wings. Oh, the lead is, oh no, <laughs> no. I think I like this. Oh my gosh, look how, fl I wanna touch him. He's so fluffy. I can't get dog creature out of my brain. Why am I picking it? Casey, calm down. We need to sketch first, otherwise, oh my goodness. Like, what if this dog, I don't know where I was going with that sentence. What if this dog? Wait, I kind of love him, though he doesn't have any ears. Hmm. <laughs> you know what, let's just go with it, hold on. I have no idea what, <laughs> I kind of love it though, so. He needs a tail. Ooh, this is how we can make it. Okay, okay. This is how we can make this one like a creature instead of just like a dog. The tail. Okay, the tail also has a head. Ooh, spooky. I think what my plan is, because these colors aren't super different, is to color the dog orange and then use the brown for shading. And maybe the line work? We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and just outline the entirety of our dog just to have a base of where I'll be scribbling and coloring. Okay, here we go. <gasps> Wait, should I do like a, like a curly texture? Okay, I lied. I'm just gonna color it <laughs> solid orange. And if I wanna add any details, lines, shading, I will do that with the brown. I got a little off task. I lost the plot for a second, but I'm back, I'm back. I'm just a sucker for really flat blocks of color that I can't resist doing this dog in a very flat, smooth way. I kind of want the tail to be brown. I think I'm gonna color the tail brown. And that means we're gonna go ahead and start adding shading and other details. Okay, I actually think I really like this shaded style on this really flat guy. <gasps> uh oh, I might really like this piece all of a sudden. Oh, the eye should be brown. Maybe I'll attempt a fancy eye. Start with brown, have it. Oh no! <laughs> oh no. I left the eyelashes white because I thought it would be easier for the brown to go through and not have to fight with the orange. I decided to make the tail a little bit more cat-like. I just thought the proportions on like the snout were a little bit longer. And I wanted this tail to be a little bit more rounder. So I made it into more like a cat creature. It does have crossed eyes, which is very cute. And that's gonna be like our, our cat dog creature. Oh my God, I, I am loving this one so much. It definitely needs a few little hair details too. I will be adding that as well. But oh my gosh, what a surprise. I really like this guy. All right, let's add the collar. Other furry details and our little doggy guy's done. I love this guy. Okay, hear me out. Worm flower. This red and green are the exact colors I think of when I think of drawing a tulip. So I can't stop thinking tulip. And it has to be a creature because I feel like drawing creatures today. So I don't know, worm tulip. Oh, make it creepy. I like that. Apparently I need this one to be perfect. I can't stop fiddling with the leaf and the stem. It's gotta be perfect. 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm also going to shoot for a lineless style with this one and use the opposite color for all the detail work in that color. So I'll put green on red and I'll put red on green. I think that makes a nice dark color in between for both of them to use. Maybe? We'll see. Oh no, <laughs> that one came broken. All right, now that the red is done and it is that much shorter than the green already, moving on to green. Start off with the eyeballs of our little guy here. Ooh, he looks spooked. What's he running from? A meat eater or a plant eater, who knows? Get it, because he's both. I gotta say, shading? Green with red didn't turn out all that bad. I think it looks pretty good. I think the last thing I want to do is add just a little bit of line detail to the flower petals like this. Okay, kind of creepy. Oh, uh oh, I did not mean to do that, but it's really creepy. So I guess that it's kind of cool looking. Oh my goodness, this one's creepy. Wait, should I? Should I do one last thing? You're either one of two people. You hate this edition, or like me, you love it. Blue and purple. Okay, I named this one Wet and Wild. Why do I keep picking up the colored one? No, Casey, come on. Mistakes are made that way. I want to create a creature that is something you can't tell if it's a water creature or an air creature. Is it a bird or is it a fish? Hold on, hold on. You didn't see anything. You saw nothing. <laughs> Hear me out. I know we just drew a dog with a cat tail, but what if... I like how I just stopped talking and didn't even finish the sentence. What if we had a bird that had a fish for a tail? Y'all have heard of Cat Dog the cartoon, I'm sure. But what if your tail had to be under the water all the time? I feel like that would be very strange. The only thing is, when it comes to color, I really don't know what to do. And I'm also just realizing this little guy has like no feet. Aw, it's very strange, but cute. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I am realizing how much space there is. Oh, is it waving? <gasps> Why is this so cute? I'm thinking we'll make the fish blue and that same blue can transition into line work for the bird. Okay, I think this is the slowest gradient I've ever created in my life. So congratulations to me. Continuing on by coloring the extra fins and things on the fish purple and using the blue to add little details like this. It's crazy what you can do with just two colors. Look how different, it really pops out. Gosh, that color. Both of these are really bright. And then on the top, oh gosh, it was a blue to purple fade, oh geez. Okay, let's see how this goes. Oh my gosh, that is, um, that is one beak. Sure is a beak. <laughs> oh, here I go again with the crazy eye. Got a little blue in there too. Oh my God. <laughs> the colors in this one are insane. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do for the shading on this wing is make the whole wing of light blue and then add a little bit of purple on the center. Okay, my goodness, that is, it's a shaded wing. We will make the, ooh, should we make the legs the same color as the beak? A blue to purple fade, maybe? I'm seriously shocked at how bright these colors are and these gradients are insane together. Actually, now that I'm kind of looking at it, the fish on the tail, does it try to eat it? Are they friends? They look like they're good friends. Yeah, that's um, whoa, look at those colors. That's an interesting one for sure. Definitely thinking about something woodsy, like a tree or a plant. I have no idea. I am just starting with a shape. Okay, we have got to start over. We've got, we gotta start over. I'm thinking I have no idea. Little wood guy. I'm literally drawing almost the same exact thing I just drew. Should he have arms? He can have, he can have a couple of things here. I'll give him a couple of options, all right? So let's have this one overlap his little face. 
Well, I just have the branches on top of them. That kind of seems silly, but I also kind of like it. Now, how will I be shading any of this? I don't know if the green really adds much. So we'll see how this, we'll see how this goes. I'm still also going to try to do a lineless style. I think I just have issues with the texture of pencil and trying to get the edges crisp and clear like you can when you make it really dark. So I will try my best. I will try my best. Okay, we've got the base of our brown down. I might, on the edges, I might make it really dark, but I think for now I'm just gonna focus on the shading. So like this, I'll make this really dark to help separate these two pieces. You know what? I guess I'll do an outline around the eyes and that can help them look sunken in, crisper, a little creepier, a little brighter. <gasps> well, that works so well. Okay, the reason why I didn't color him full darkness is I wanted to try to add a little bit of wood texture because right now he just looks like a little brown poo guy, you know? I want him to look like wood, at least a little bit. Oh, I already think it's working. Okay, I have added enough shading here and there. He's looking pretty woody, I think flip our pencil around. I keep looking for my next color, forgetting that's literally on the other side. Now, how am I gonna go about shading the green? We could maybe use brown. Gotta be honest, that kind of scares me, but it could work, it could work. And should I use the green to go over the like limb hand things to suggest that there is some overlap? Maybe? It wouldn't hurt to try. Three, two, one! No, I do like that. It's got this cool, like, transparency. Oh, I like that a lot! Aw. Should I do that for behind? Maybe. Let's see what this looks like, and I'll think about it. Okay, I think I have to do it. Here I go. Just a little, just a little. I'll go back with green to smooth it out. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't ha oh, you know what? No! <gasps> I like it a lot. I like it a lot. There, I said it. Yeah. I feel like we need little textures on the bushes, but I don't know what to do. So I guess I'm just doing this, which I kind of regret. <laughs> oh well. That's cute. Okay, I like him again. Aw, he's a cutie. Another red and green combi- Stop. Put it down. Another red and green combination. I haven't drawn any sort of dinosaur-like creature yet. And I kind of want to do blood splatters, of course. Oh my goodness, what, okay. I'm just thinking that's a big head and we don't even have a body yet. Is this a baby? Okay, hold on. <laughs> I kind of want to give it more of a snout. I'm sorry, is this a ghost dinosaur? I'm thinking really hard about this. Wait, is that a dolphin? No, no evil zombie dolphins, unless... <gasps> unless... It was an evil zombie dolphin. Wait, no, they can't have a nostril. They have to have like a... Okay, listen, this is a creature, yeah? This is going to be blood. It's going to do a green to red fade, I guess. I, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what this is, but I, I guess that's sort of the point, creating silly creatures. Okay, um, all right. Red to green, blood, goop, poison, zombie dinosaur thing. Okay, we're gonna start off by coloring some red underwear. <laughs> the green will overlap the red, so we can get a nice overlapping effect. I'm trying to decide how hard I want to go. Do I want to press down all the way or do I just want to do a little bit? You know, you draw one illustration with transparency and then you can't resist doing it again and again and again. It just looks so good. And our bottom lip thing. Thing? Well, I was just still thinking, is this a skull or is it a creature? I don't know. I just love how different these two colors are so you can obviously see where they meet together and there's no blurriness. It's very clear, one's red and one's green. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. <gasps> not all of the colors do so well with overlapping. They're not super different or maybe one's black and one's yellow. But when you find one that really interacts with the other color, you just gotta, you just gotta. 
I'm going to be a little bit more patient with this gradient than I usually aim. I really feel like these two need to be slowly worked together and not my usual rush in with a little bit of a texture gradient. I don't know though, this one's looking rough. <laughs> I'm taking it slow, but I don't know. Okay, I think, <laughs> whoo. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I think that's going to be the best I can do right now with my skills as far as blending red and green together go. I think I, I think I wanted to get more of a gradual gradient, but I say as I keep, oh geez, okay, I guess I'm still going. Uh-oh, maybe I should think about stopping. Okay, so you don't make any regretful decisions. Okay. Oh yeah, I wanted to get an eyeball. An eyeball. Both the eyeballs. Oh yeah, I wanted to make its eyes look a little bit more sunken in and shaded. So I'm gonna add some red here. Uh oh, uh oh, no, I got red in the eyeball. No, I really didn't want to get red in the white. That's okay. Okay, Uh, all right. Last thing, I wanted to add a little bit of green to our red blood just to give it some, I don't know, more depth. All right, <gasps> you know, I don't know what it is, but it's cute, I like it. I was thinking green like a frog, <laughs> but also I don't have anything in mind. I feel like every time I jump into these without any plan, bad things happen. Okay, already, I don't know what's happening. Okay, you know what? Okay, purple tongue? Okay. <laughs> now, does this guy have back legs is the question. Wait, what if we like exaggerated the tongue on turns? Ew! Okay, I hate it, but I love it. Are they kissing? <gasps> Are they kissing? Oh no, that's kind of scarier actually. Oh no. Should I leave the frog a blob? It doesn't really look like a frog. So he's running this way perhaps. He's got legs. Maybe he has legs. Wait, 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 wait. What is that leg? That leg means nothing to anybody. Okay, that's not, that's not so bad, yeah? They have like a faded shadow. Okay, that's pretty silly. I will say, I think the, the face mouth is bothering me that it's centered. I'm going to go ahead and scooch it all to the side just a little bit. Okay, interesting. You know what? I like it, it's dumb. Sometimes in art, you look dumb. And especially if you're my art, you're gonna look dumb. I also want the inside of the mouth to be a little bit green just to make it a weird different color than the tongue, so we'll see how that goes. I may have gone a little hard on the purple on the back leg, for sure. <laughs> you can't even see that it's green. I keep saying that and then I finish off the leg and it actually does look really good. It helps, I think, that the green is a cool green and not a warm green. There's more blue undertones than yellow, so definitely helping it mix in with the purple a bit. Looks a lot better than I expected. Putting some more shading down for the tongue before coloring it purple. I don't know how that's gonna look, but I gotta try. <laughs> Does it look shaded? Uh, no, that green is definitely lighter than the purple, but I don't know. It's some weird backwards shading on this planet. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> hmm, that makes no sense with the green there. Uh, but I, I tried. Which is how I feel about the mouth. The mouth just sort of disappears into a, a purple blob. Okay, the very last thing, we need our little fly. Oh my god, this thing is terrifying. Like I almost, I'm looking at his face and I kind of feel like he's suffering. Maybe some spots to add just a little bit of something here. Wait, should I make him angry? <gasps> I mean, he, he's certainly angry now. And you know what? I really liked the purple shading, but he's, he's kind of cute. Let's just say you can't win them all. All right, it's our last one. And honestly, the one I was the most concerned about because that light color and that blue, 
It's an interesting combination. So what am I drawing? Um, I don't, I don't know. Okay, it's not entirely true. I was thinking uh, of a worm as, as one does. And I guess I'm gonna make that worm, he's he's like mobile. He, he walks using rocks, I think. Do I sound sure about this? So we're gonna have like holes in rocks. So you're probably still thinking, what are you drawing? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so then the worm is going to be going through the holes. Okay, we've got our Big worm guy using rocks to walk. How does he connect to the rocks? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm just drawing a worm that connects itself to a bunch of rocks and can walk. Does it look like I know what I'm doing? Let's not let's not think about the details of, of how this guy works and let's just think about the details on uh, how we're gonna color this guy. I feel like this one's going to be a disaster. I don't know why. I'm just getting, I'm getting disaster vibes. I think the problem is I'm gonna try too many crazy shading situations and it's just going to goof it all up, but I guess we'll find out. I don't know why I'm starting off with the holes that the worm's going into. I have no idea why that's what I'm starting off with, but I sure am starting off with that. I mean, that's looking pretty good, yeah? I gotta say I'm a little nervous about what color to make the rocks. Originally I was thinking about putting down some of the peach first and then going over it with a little bit of blue. It kind of creates this brownish color, but y'all nervous. I feel like it could be a disaster. <laughs> I'm still thinking if I want to do this lineless, I feel like this peachy orange color is very much different from the white, but I don't know if it's as different as I'd like it to be. I mean, it's more textured than I'd like it to be, but that could be rock colored, right? Okay, I'm really nervous about <laughs> what this is going to look like. I feel like it, like I said, it would have just looked great blue, uh, but I've already committed to layering. So on one hand, it's not what I was going for. On the other hand, it's kind of got an interesting look to it. I actually do like the textures. It's. You know, it's different. I do like a nice smooth application of color, but I don't know, I, I find this kind of fun. Huh. Okay, I am gonna add some line work though. I can shade it even. I can make the rock look more 3D. Oh, oh, I like this even more now. Okay, I may have goofed it up, but still, my shading was kind of dookie, but I tried. <laughs> You can't say I didn't try. I think what I should have did was shade one side and stopped there. But I shaded a second side, which made it sort of blend in, so. Oh well. I like this one, but there's something, there's something interesting about it. Oh wait, I was gonna add some more little texture details on the rocks. And then we're done. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Go out there and make yourself a website. And a huge thank you to you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.